of hand. Paul, why don't you show us one of your specialties? Okay, I'll show you something actually with a marked deck of cards. Now, do you know how you can tell they're marked? No. Oh, well, you see, in this case, they say marked cards. I'm not taking any chances. Dead giveaway, isn't it? Yes. Now, actually, though, the cards are marked a little differently. Not on the back, as you might expect, but you see, these cards are marked on the edges. It's called an edge marked. One well, there deck of cards. Now, they're ordinary cards, yeah. as you can see, except for the strange little marks. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, would you do me a favor? Just as I drop the cards, say stop anywhere at all. Stop. In fact, take the card to stop me okay. out, look at it, and maybe show it around. Sneak a look at the camera. You can't see it, right? Okay. Now, if you place it down right about there, sure. I'm going to lose your card in the pack, but not okay. with the normal shuffle. So I'm going to give them what we call an unshuffle. Oh. Have you ever heard of that? No. Okay, it's just the opposite of shuffling cards. I take the deck and divide it just like that, and I give the cards an unshuffle. Yeah, they all shuffle, yeah. Well, they look like they're shuffling, Certain but actually, movement. if you look at the marks on the side of the pack, you see it now reads unshuffled four uh, times. So it does. Now, the reason it says it four times is because they've been unshuffled into four categories. Hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. But let's try another unshuffle. In fact, take a look. Unshuffled. Two times. Unshuffled. See, now that means they've been unshuffled into two categories. That's right. All the red in one group and all the black, but uh, let's try it one more time. One more time. Now watch. One final unshuffle. Okay. Everyone thinks I'm shuffling. I'm not. I'd swear. No, it's unshuffled. Unshuffled. Oh, I know you're probably wondering if it's true, but I wouldn't kid you. You see, if you look at the cards, they are unshuffled. Can you Every see Every card in perfect order. Hearts, clubs, diamonds and spades. Now, oh wait, I forgot to find your card. That's right. Okay, wait, very quickly, we'll try to find your card. You mean there's you more? Oh, well, you selected a card, I have to find it. That's right. It's somewhere here in the pack. I won't look face up, that's too easy. What was the name of your card? My card was the Eight of Hearts. Because I've unshuffled it right on top. There it is, the, oh, did you say Ace or Eight? Eight of Hearts. Oh, well wait, let me try it one more time. Watch the cards. Okay. There it is, the Eight. It says Eight of Hearts on the side of the... <laughs> Stay tuned for more magic moments. You never know when one might occur. I'll never try that again. This is Dick Cavett with another HBO Magic Moment. Paul Gertner, who's standing beside me, won an international contest, first place for a sleight of hand. What you're about to see involves no gimmicks, no mechanical trickery of any kind, just a piece of pure manipulation. Paul? Thank you. I would like to start by reciting a poem. Now, the name of the poem is A Trick with a Stick. It's about magic, and it goes something like this. In fact, it goes exactly like this. A trick with a stick is a nice thing to see on... Fortunately, I don't have one on me, but a stick for the trick could be found anywhere. Over there, over there, or even out here. Now, where that stick has come from, I really can't say. I know I didn't bring it when I came here today, but that's the end of the poem, so I'll just put it away. But you know something else? That stick doesn't stay. You see, it jumps from my pocket right into my hand. Now, some think it's funny and some think it's grand, but if I take this stick and I tap it on my knee, now that's kind of confusing. Now, where can it be? It's not over here, and it's not up the sleeve. It's not down by the knee. Did you see the stick leave? Here it is. Now, if I hold this stick out so that you can see, when I toss it like that, now where can it be? It can't be seen anywhere by you or by me, but I know where it is because it's down by my knee. But it's rather confusing how this stick jumps around when I toss it like that. Now the stick can't be found. It's not in the hands and it's not on the ground because it jumped to my pocket without making a sound. But I'll do one last trick with this magical stick, but you have to watch close because it happens quite quick. If I push it through my hands once or twice, the stick changes colors. Now that's kind of nice. Paul, oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. It looks just as good here as it does to you and vice versa. <laughs> Stay tuned for more magic moments. You never know when one may occur.
time to cab it. And this is another HBO magic moment. Every so often there's an international contest and somebody takes first place in sleight of hand. We have one of those gentlemen with us. Paul Gertner is going to show us one of his winning specialties. Paul? Okay, I will show you something with a pack of cards. But actually, personally, I think card tricks involve too many cards. I mean, 52 cards are a lot of cards to keep track of. Mm -hmm. And you never see a magician do a trick with 52 cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you something with a small number of cards. You really only have to watch six cards. The four aces and also the jokers. There's the one, the two, and one other object, a coin. You see, it's not really a card trick. Actually, it's a coin trick. If I take the 50 cent piece in my hand, whenever I give it a little shake, it disappears. Did you see it? I do now. Under the ace. <laughs> Look, that's the first time. I'll do that again. It has a tendency to just jump around the table. If you watch the half dollar, whenever I take it above the ace of clubs, it appears under the ace of clubs. I'll even try it in the other hand. It works just as well in the right hand as it does in the left. If you watch the coin, there it is under the ace. And one last time, it will travel from here over to here. But remember, don't blink or you'll miss it. Now, that's 50 cents, and that's a dollar. That's a dollar 50, and that's two dollars. That's 250, that's three dollars, that's four dollars, that's five dollars, and that's <laughs> oh, ridiculous. You've oh, no. <laughs> heard of inflation, but this is ridiculous. Paul, that was brilliant. And stay tuned for other magic moments, because you never know when one may appear. Cabot with another HBO magic moment. Paul Gertner is beside me, and he is an international contest winner, first place, of course, for his mastery of sleight of hand, and I'm told that when you see what he's about to show us, you'll see why this is one of the things with which he won. Paul? Well, I'll show you the classic illusion known as the old three shell game, sometimes called the cups and balls. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've ever seen it done before, you probably see the magician use something like this, right? Yeah, kind of soft little rubber ball like that, yeah. yeah. That's the idea. I place it under the cup, I'll mix it around, and your job is to guess where the ball is. Mm -hmm. But you see, my problem is I'm from Pittsburgh, and in Pittsburgh we make steel. Yeah. So basically the problem was, when I learned this trick, I had no idea you were supposed to use a sponge or a rubber ball. Don't tell me you tried it with a steel ball. And you got it, that's exactly what oh. happened. Oh. Now, you see, I was very young at the mm. time, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize I'd place the ball under the cup, and I'd mix them around and say to my mom and dad, where's the ball? And They'd guess. The smarter of them knew right away, right? You've got it. Now, this time, though, whenever I place it under the cup, soon I realized you can't fool anyone with a steel ball and a metal cup because you can hear it. Yeah. Unless you can make the sound and the ball disappear and travel over here inside the pocket. Oh, yes. Well, that's the first time. Let's try it again. If you watch the ball, it leaves the hand and travels under the cup. Mm -hmm. But now there's one there, one there, and now we're ready to start the trick. I don't remember those being there. Oh, we'll try it again. Okay. <laughs> three cups and three balls. Oh, by the way, whenever I place a ball on top of the cup, if you keep an eye on that ball, you can actually see it go right through the top of the cup. Wow. That's the first time. Even if I do it with the second ball, actually through the top of the cup. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I know, I know. I'll place them under the cup one at a time, and not only will you see them, but you'll actually hear ball number one under cup number one. Mm -hmm. Ball number two, under cup number two, mm -hmm. and ball number three, that stays, under cup number three. Now, Dick, if I take two of them, can you see them? Oh, uh, sure, Paul. They're invisible. Take my word for Whatever it. Whatever you say. If I set them down on the center, give them a tap, that's gone, that's gone, because now they're all together in the middle. Mm -hmm. Am I going too fast? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> I'll Not try a little bit. one more time. <clears throat> Actually, since this is the end of the trick, and in the beginning I said I'd use just one ball, I'll put them away. This one stays in the pocket. Okay. Now that leaves me with just two. Yeah. And I'll do the same thing. This one right here stays inside the pocket. Take a guess. How many balls under the center cup? Well, I'm tempted to say one, but I'm not sure. Yeah, just one. Might... I didn't cheat yet. Ah. 
but if there's one there, there's one over there. I'll show you how the trick is done. Okay. You see, I never really put the ball in the hand, and I never really place it in the pocket. But while everyone's watching the pocket, this hand does the dirty work, and I can slip it under the cup, and it looks like it was there all the while. That's all there is to it. That's it. Actually, oh, well, I should put it away one more time. Uh, take one guess. How many under the center? I, I hate did to do it, it again. One now again, there's one, oh, two, and you three. Did it. But, you know, you can't do this trick with just three balls. You need an extra one. Oh, really? Oh, a fourth ball. That's it, right there. It's there's an here. extra one right over there. Right. And there's <laughs> another extra one right over there. <laughs> now, they're both pretty big and both fairly heavy. But underneath the center cup, you see, is the biggest one of all. Because No, that's not it. That's the biggest one. Oh! But I can't figure out where it comes from. <sighs> Stay tuned for another magic moment. You never know when one's going to appear.